Hi, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I have spent the day using some squirt guns to dye yarn with my four-year-old. It is a lot of fun. Oh, is there any liquid left in this guy? No. There is. It just won't come out. There we go. Ha! <laughs> there you go. See? When when the water level starts to get a little low, it's a little hard. These are dollar store swerp guns after all, but we can get this really fun pattern. And I thought it would be fun to try this on some blanks. This blank is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And this is a double stranded blank, which means that it's got 250 gram skeins of yarn that have been knit together so that we can unravel it at the end. Now, I am at the tail end of the liquid in these squirt guns. You can see they started off full, there's not very much left. But I still think we can get a pretty interesting pattern. Let's see, is this the red or the pink? I think this is the pink. Not sure if I'm going to get any out of that one. The grass is actually still a little wet too. It is pink. I know that one's pink. Here we go. We've got some in the red. Yeah. And so I'll put a link, actually maybe we'll have the red go all the way through, a link in the video description to the original video where we mix the dyes. But we are using some Wilton liquid food coloring today. And let's see if there's any of this that I can get back out. There we go. This cool green. It's but called teal. Yes, it's a nice teal. Pretty teal. It's a very pretty teal. So, I am now going to speed things up, but I am going to be using these squirt guns to finish coloring this blank. This blank is a commercial blank from Knit Picks, and you can find a link in the video description. This is a lot of fun. My hands, because I'm not using gloves, also look pretty spray painted. I think that this is a fun thing to do with kids. It is really active. Um, it's a lot harder with the squirt ones, mostly empty. But with only, I think that there are six or seven drops of the color white food coloring in each of the almost full um, squirt guns to begin with. And so we got a lot of color here. Um, and now, oh, I guess I didn't mention that I did pre-soak this blank in some water with three tablespoons of white vinegar. And so now I am going to go and get, um, I'm going to go get a bowl so that way we can prepare to microwave this. But one of the benefits of having a sock blank is that you see how we have this all over color, but there's a fade. We've got more yellow on one side, more green on one, and then some orange and red throughout. And since this is a double stranded blank, we will end up with some um, pretty dyes. Pretty dyes. And if you were to knit matching socks, you could get a symmetrical or a matching project. And of course, watch more of these Thank you, honey. Um, but, of course, you can, um, when you unravel this yarn to knit with it, you could get identical socks or mittens or something really cool with it. Now, you could wrap this in saran wrap to keep the colors from sort of sticking together, but I'm sort of going to just scrunch it up like so and place it in a microwave safe bowl. Now I am going to cover this with a silicone microwave safe cover and pop it in the microwave for a total of four minutes and two minute increments. After a total of four minutes this is nice and hot and so now I can let it cool completely before we wash our blank. I just picked up our sock blank from the bowl and now we can start washing it putting it slowly so we can see the way that our color struck. And actually the um, scrunching it up didn't seem to move things around too much. I did sort of try to have some bits of green um, and bits of yellow throughout the whole thing to sort of tie this together. Um, but yeah, and look at that. That rinse water is clear. That is amazing. I am now going to add a little bit of just some clear dish soap. Um, I like using clear dish soap because it will help you see if um, you have any bleeding in the rinse. 
but I'm not really expecting to, yeah, that color is in the yarn. I haven't decided if I am going to unravel this blank or leave it in the blank form, but either way, I will come back and share the finished drive. Oh, maybe we do have a, a smidge. Eh, it's hard to say. <laughs> Um, I, I will come back, um, once I rinse out all the soap, I'm going to hang this up to dry, and then I will come back and show you what our dry blank looks like. And the color on my hands comes from the leaky squirt gun, not from picking up the yarn right now. This sock blank is so cool. You have streaks of color from where I was still able to use the more full squirt gun, and then if you zoom in, you can see that there's speckles from when it w space sort of started to function a little more like a spray bottle. I think that this will be really, really cool when you unravel because there are, there's elements of the red throughout the entire, the entire skein, but then there are the sections of teal, orange, and yellow, which will, which are in a gradient. Um, and I think that it will really feel like one complete colorway versus three different yarns that you just included all in one pair of socks. The wrong side of the blank does not have nearly as much color from the front, which means that we will have a speckled gradient in here, which is awesome because honestly, speckled gradients are my favorite type of yarn. <laughs> Now I need to go and unravel this blank so we can see what the gradient looks like on our Nitty Nami. It's a great way to get a sense of how the colors might transition on whatever project you decide to turn it into. Sometimes people ask me why I bother unraveling my double-stranded blanks when part of the fun is that you can knit from them directly. I like to unravel them and share that in the videos because I think that it gives a better picture of what or of how the yarn might knit up. It can be hard to visualize how the speckles of color will come from whatever dyeing technique I used until you see the gradient on the Nitty Knotty. This gradient is awesome. I love the mixture of the orange, yellow, and teal, and that there are some elements of all three colors throughout the entire yarn. The biggest perk of a double-stranded blank is that you get two identical 50 gram skeins of yarn. And this is great for either symmetrical projects or making matched a matched pair of socks. I think that if I were to take two different blanks and do this exact same technique with the same colors, the gradients between the two sets would not match up anywhere nearly as perfectly as one double-stranded blank does. Um, and that means that each one is really a one-of-a-kind, really more of a two-of-a-kind type yarn. I still need to go wet this yarn to help relax the crimp that is there from unraveling the blank. However, I twisted up one of these skeins just so that way you could get a sense of what the finished yarn will look like. I find that a quick soak in room temperature tap water and then hanging up the yarn to dry uh, really helps the yarn relax. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I release at least two new yarn dyeing videos every week, and you really don't want to miss one. If you are a big Chemnitz fan and you would like to support us on a more personal level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Patreon is a platform where fans can support the creators that they enjoy. And in exchange for your patronage, you can get access to a lot of fantastic perks. These can include early access to a new dyeing video, behind the, exclusive behind the scenes sneak peeks, Chemnitz Creations Etsy coupons, and more. You can find a link in the video description and iCard. Thank you so much for watching.